Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted and privileged to welcome a very, very accomplished and senior professional from New York, USA, Mr. Greg Williams. Greg, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh, and thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Uh, Greg is uh, a master negotiator and a body language expert. He's a Harvard-trained negotiator with a wealth of 30-plus experience of uh, years of ex- negotiation and reading body language experience, and he's a well-recognized face on TV channels. So, Greg, let me start by asking you about your motto, which I found fascinating when I was reading about you, and that motto is, you're always negotiating. Tell me more. <laughs> oh, for sure. A lot of people consider themselves negotiating when they are literally sitting on one side of the table across from someone else or, okay, I'm going in to buy uh, an automobile and uh, so now I'm getting ready to negotiate. But in reality, we are always negotiating because any interactions we have with other individuals Mm -hmm. gives them insight into our personality as as to what it is we may do in a particular Mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. And thus, by having that insight, People know how to interact with you better. Mm-hmm. Plus, we do negotiate every time we engage with someone else right. to obtain right. what we are seeking as mm-hmm. far as the outcome that we want. Mm-hmm. And thus, you're constantly negotiating. And people should be very mindful of that mm-hmm. and pay attention to exactly how they interact with others. Mm-hmm. How fascinating. And what got you interested in the subject of body language? Well, actually, I was a TV news contributor, and I was branded a body language expert because I had a lot of negotiation expertise. Mm -hmm. But as a result of learning and knowing uh, so much about negotiation processes, body language naturally flows into something that you are engaged in when you're talking with other people. Mm -hmm. Because someone can say no, or they can say no. Or they could say, no. Mm. Well, those gestures add emphasis on the degree they mean when they say no. Mm. And thus, if you can pick up on little cues that people will engage. um, Ah, I was just getting ready to do that. Mm. Uh, Interestingly enough, Mm. uh, you can pick up on some of the thoughts that may be occurring internally Mm. to those individuals. And thus, body language, especially when negotiating, Mm is something that not only adds value to the negotiation process, Mm -hmm. but it gives you insights into the inner thoughts that someone may try to keep from you. Mm -hmm. How fascinating. And can you share some of the important aspects of body language that we should be aware of? Oh, definitely so. Okay. First of all, let's talk about it from uh, the perspective of staying safe, which Mm -hmm. uh, I write about in my latest post, which goes out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Always observe someone's hands uh, because they may cover their mouth when they're speaking, and that can indicate that, well, they're trying to hold back Mm. what they're saying. Mm. Why are they trying to hold it back is something Mm. that you should question yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, From time to time, they may fondle their ear. Well, Mm. what does that mean? It could mean that they don't believe what they're saying as they're Mm -hmm. speaking, or they don't believe what they're hearing. Now, the point is, You never look at one gesture and make an assumption that, oh, they must be lying because uh, they scratched their nose at a particular point in time or something Mm. of that nature. Mm. You look at cluster of actions to assess to what degree what you're hearing is truthful per what they want you to believe. And once you make that assessment, Mm -hmm. you can then either test them by saying, oh, so let me reiterate the statement that I made a moment ago. What you're saying is X, Y, Z, and see how they react from that point. Ashatosh, the body always wants to stay in a state of comfort. Mm -hmm. And thus, when it's out of that state of comfort, Mm -hmm. it will do something in an attempt to put itself back in that state of comfort. Mm -hmm. Someone starts to squirm. Well, they're squirming because they're trying to make themselves feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's cases like that, that one should observe per when the action occurred, number one, Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And number two, what the topic of conversation was mm. that caused that particular reaction or action. Mm. Very interesting. But a follow-up question, Greg, would be, how does culture impact body language? Because we all come from different parts of the world and our mannerisms could be very different, which could be driven by the culture that we've grown in. Oh, for sure. Very, very good question. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain gestures that we all will emit given mm -hmm. a certain set of circumstances. They're Correct. called micro expressions. Correct. Micro expressions last for less than a second, mm -hmm. and they occur before the brain has a chance to curtail mm -hmm. the action that's displayed. That's oh, number wow. one. Okay. Yes, that's number one. Number two, whenever you assess someone's body language, what you should have done prior to that mm -hmm. is understand, like you said a moment ago, the culture from which they come mm -hmm. and understand what reactions are in mm -hmm. that particular culture. Right. And then see how that person varies from that particular culture. Mm -hmm. But even more so, you establish a baseline of how that particular individual reacts in any particular situation. Mm. I've had clients that have had me go into an environment just for the express purpose of observing how a target acts when he or she is in a neutral environment, an mm. environment where they don't feel threatened. And mm. we use that as the baseline to later assess, wait a minute now, before this person uh, performed in such a manner, and now they've altered their behavior. Why? Mm. Well, mm. are they under stress? Are they outright lying? And and I've been on uh, in different uh, situations where I have served to assess people's body language, even on TV, when talking about those that are in the news, uh, the presence of the United States or, or things of that nature to make that same assessment. How oh, amazing. And uh, what are some of the nonverbal cues that indicate that the other party is open to compromise? Well, suppose I said, well, is that your best offer? Now, you may have noticed how I leaned in a little bit. Mm. Suppose instead I said, is that your best offer? Really? You may have noticed. I said, yes, yes. So, so you can pick up some of those cues. Yeah right there mm. uh, to indicate and that was just slight because i moved in mm. moved away mm. swallowed and again remember what i said about body language the the body always wants to stay in a state of comfort mm. and thus as soon as it goes out of that state of comfort it tries to do something to compensate for it swallowing is mm. one thing to mm. actually observe because then you can see mm. the physical action that's being caused by the Correct. person getting choked up or whatever be the case Correct. Fascinating. I mean, you seem to have, have worked on such a fascinating area of uh, work, which very few people know much about. Mm. But my next question to you, Greg, is how can one effectively control their own body language to influence a negotiation? Well, that's a fascinating question. Okay. Now, did you kind of catch what I did there? Yeah, you I've noticed you've used the word fascinating yeah. five or six times already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right away, I used the word fascinating. Mm -hmm. And that's a nonverbal, verbal way to connect mm -hmm. with someone, mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. And if one wanted to display empathy with someone else, mm -hmm. they would also speak at the same pace of that particular individual. Mm -hmm. They would also mimic the images that they saw that person engage in mm. per whatever action that person displayed mm. uh, that's that's but one of the ways and understanding more about that person's mindset their mm. background mm. understanding what's important to them so when someone speaks if you listen to the emphasis they place on certain words mm. the facial displays that they show as they're speaking mm. you can gather insights about what's most important to them. Mm. And then you try to show them, hey, I cause you no harm. I'm mm. here not to cause you harm at all. Mm. I would like to be a friend of yours. I'd like to be an associate of yours. Mm. The tonality of my voice even softened as I was saying that. So the tonality of a voice can also mm. imply to what degree someone is sincere as they're speaking. Mm. 
Very, very interesting. How do you, uh, and how do power, power dynamics manifest in body language and how can we read these signs? Ah, another fascinating question. Mm -hmm. Now, I've taken a stand or yep, as I'm sitting. Yes, exactly. Yep. So I, I'm actually leaning back. Mm -hmm. And one way that you could understand the power dynamics that were playing out in a particular situation is to see to what degree someone else mimicked your actions. Mm -hmm. Because if they mimic your actions, when mirroring occurs, which is what it's called, mm -hmm. one person is leading at that particular point in time. The other person is following. Mm. But if the person that's following all of a sudden starts to commit an action and the other individual starts to mimic that person's action, the person that was formally leading is uh, formally following is now leading. Mm. And, and that's yet something else that will influence dynamics when mm. you are negotiating. Mm. Plus that, depending upon with whom you're negotiating, some negotiators are Real tough types. You know, the only way I can win is if you lose. Hmm. Well, if you know you're negotiating with someone of that nature, you know the power dynamics are such that he thinks, you know, he's going to mop the floor with you, as it were. Mm -hmm. You could position yourself with him by saying, look, if you want to have a tough negotiation, we can have a tough negotiation, mm -hmm. but it's going to be tough on both of us. Mm -hmm. So don't think you're going to mop the floor up with me. Mm -hmm. So you're being slightly confrontational. But in some cases, especially with those that would intend to bully you, mm -hmm. pushing back to let them know, wait a minute, if you want some, you got to bring some. Mm -hmm. And that means that basically I'm not going to let you push me around. So let's have at it. Mm -hmm. Your move. Mm -hmm. And see how that person modifies their action after that. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to say that I was going to try and push you around or anything of that mm -hmm. nature. And then your response could be, Okay, well, I, I'm glad that we are on the same page. Hmm. Let's continue. You hmm. notice how things ratchet it down yeah. real fast, but yeah. the reason they ratchet it down in that scenario was simply yeah. because I let that other individual know hmm. I'm not going to let you push me around. And mm -hmm. some negotiators will test you by seeing to what degree they can push you around. Hmm. And you just have to stop it before it starts. Hmm. And I guess... You would say the same thing if I was to ask you that what happens if someone is being over aggressive or over confrontational? Well, that is exactly the same thing. If they're being dependent upon what you're negotiating for right. and they're being overly aggressive or confrontational, you, you could take the tact of why are you being so aggressive right mm -hmm. now? And the person says, do you think this is aggressive? Wait until we get to the hard part of the negotiation. Mm. And then you could flip on a switch. Oh, you think there's going to be a harder part of the negotiation? Okay, mm. I'm ready for the harder part of the yeah. negotiation. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to exit the negotiation right now. Mm. Uh, you call me when you calm down. Mm. Again, it's the pushback to, to see how the person reacts. And suppose the person says, okay, no problem then. Now, Part of any negotiation plan is knowing what the options are of the opposing negotiator. Mm. Will they get what they want from you? How long will it take them? What's their timeline to obtain what outcome they're seeking, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So you know where your leverage points are before you even enter into a negotiation. Amazing. Uh, more, next few questions are more about negotiation, you know. And this is for a lot of young people who will listen to our conversation. How can someone improve their negotiation skills? Ah, uh, we started talking about it at the beginning yeah. of this segment. First of all, realize that you are always negotiating. Yep. Observe how you interact with someone and the outcomes that occur mm -hmm. and think about how you may have improve, improved that outcome had you done X, Y, Z, as opposed to A, B, C. Hmm. By ratcheting up your awareness of the fact that you're always negotiating and the outcomes that occur in different situations, hmm. you will naturally improve your negotiation abilities, number one, hmm. and then start reading, start learning more about negotiations. Now, you mentioned younger folks, and uh, hey, younger folks tend not to read as much as past generations, I'll phrase mm -hmm. it in that manner. Mm -hmm. So that means 
look at videos even Mm -hmm. Uh, this is going to be an excellent show because you're an excellent host okay Mm -hmm. so start Mm -hmm. looking at stuff like that so Mm -hmm. that you can gain insights not only to improve your negotiation abilities Mm -hmm. but to improve your life right right and are there any common negotiation mistakes that people make oh yes number one not realizing that Mm -hmm. they're negotiating Right. That's that's number one. Number two, thinking because they're negotiating with someone that has more assets, mm-hmm. uh, a larger entity, whatever be the case, mm-hmm. that they cannot negotiate effectively with that particular entity. Mm-hmm. Never place yourself mentally in a state of disadvantaged because mm-hmm. you think somebody else has more resources than you do. Mm-hmm. Understand, if they're talking to you, there's some sense of value that they perceive in you. Mm -hmm. If you've done your homework, you should know what that value is and thus know how to present yourself so that you enhance your value. Mm -hmm. Never place yourself as an underdog unless that's intentional to see what the other side will do Mm -hmm. as you negotiate with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there any space or place for empathy? When it comes oh, to negotiation? Definitely so. Empathy plays a huge role in negotiation mm-hmm. because if I can understand and show through my actions mm-hmm. that I understand your plight, you're more likely to embrace whatever I offer you, especially if you perceive it as being in good faith. Mm-hmm. And it's my job to make you understand that I really am on your side. We're a team. We're not negotiating against one another, another. Mm. we're negotiating with one another. Mm. And that's where empathy actually comes in. Mm. It's showing, hey, I'm a human, you're a human. Mm. Okay, we can solve this problem if we put our heads together at address. And empathy is the key that unlocks that door. (laughs) Correct. You know, my next question uh, is about uh, a virtual setting, but I think you've already answered it. My question is, how can we negotiate effectively in a virtual setting when much of the body language might not be visible? And the reason I said you already answered because you've picked up two or three things that I've been doing, you know, so. (laughs) And and yes, I tell some of my clients sometimes, again, based on where you are in the negotiation process, Mm -hmm. it would be better to do so in a virtual setting. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're able to see more of the facial expressions, and we do convey a lot of information with our faces, with our face, and thus we gain insight, Mm -hmm. as opposed to sometimes you may be diverted because somebody is doing some type of hand movements or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yes, the hand movements should be taken note of per when they occur Mm -hmm. and what direction they're uh, occurring in. I trust you. Now, I pulled you in. The hand gesture pulled pulled, Mm -hmm. up. that statement in as opposed to i trust you Mm. and i'm saying wait a minute there are two different gestures here Mm. you hear the verbal gesture that says i trust you but at the same time the hand is pushing Mm. it away Mm. then if you see that while you're in a virtual environment it would truly behoove you to say oh ashatosh i i I appreciate that sentiment uh what is it that you trust about me Mm. that's the follow-up question at that particular point why because i saw the conflict with the hand pushing Mm. away while Mm. the verbiage said you were pulling me in Mm. fantastic uh one more question uh on body language and that is that how can negotiation and body language skills be used in everyday life beyond formal negotiations we do use it in everyday life Mm -hmm. if someone makes a request of us we automatically Mm -hmm. sense their body language Mm -hmm. to assess to what degree they're being bona fide Mm -hmm. to what degree they may be trying to what we say in the u.s sucker us into a situation that's Mm -hmm. disadvantageous at disadvantageous to us and we read the signs innately. We do so simply because it's in our nature to be alert to our environment. Mm. And thus, when you're in a non-negotiating, non-negotiation environment, we're still reading body language to see mm. to what degree somebody agrees with us, to what degree they disagree with us, etc. So the two go hand in hand mm. every day in almost every environment that we are in. 
every day. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I want to move to your books. You know, I didn't um, uh, introduce you because I you, I didn't get them in enough information. But mm -hmm. uh, Greg is also a published author of several books. And I'm going to ask Greg to talk to us a little bit about his books. And I'm going to ask all our viewers and listeners to go and check out Mr. Greg Williams' books on Amazon. I will go and check them myself. So, Greg, tell me a little bit about your books and the subjects you write on. Well, this one is ah. negotiating with negotiating with a bully. Mm. It discusses tactics that you can use against those individuals that we spoke about earlier that are hard-nosed negotiators or people that just want to push you around because that's how they get their fun, okay? Uh, and it talks about the strategies that you can adopt to actually understand the mindset, who's motivating or what is motivating that individual to act that particular way. Mm -hmm. What strategies can you adopt to offset that? Whom is it that you can go to to obtain leverage to put that person back in his or her place? Mm -hmm. This this book, Body Language Secrets, Wow. To win more okay. negotiations mm -hmm. talks about the body language gestures that people emit during the negotiation process. And remember, mm -hmm. we talked earlier about you're always negotiating and how you can, again, create strategies based on someone's body language before you negotiate with them. Because mm -hmm. you know something about how their gestures, uh, how they will emit their gestures, mm -hmm. and then how to observe their gestures throughout the negotiation process. And, and Ashatosh. Husband and wives negotiate, bosses and employees constantly negotiate, mm -hmm. friends constantly negotiate. Children wouldn't negotiate. Wouldn't you love to know, yes, mm -hmm. wouldn't you love to know what's really going on in someone's mind mm -hmm. by being able to read their body language? And the answer is a definite yes. And that book, the latter book, Body Language Secrets to Win More Negotiation, yeah. uh, Negotiations oh, talks yeah. about just that, uh, for yes. sure. But those are my two latest books, by mm -hmm. the way. I'm not going to show you the other books. No, no, that's, it's a step, step, no, we'll, we'll you know? pick it up and I'm sure we'll read about all your books on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, and Greg, my last question to you, and this is for the thousands of uh, people who will listen to our conversation. What would you say are three lessons or three tips uh, for young people uh, to read someone's body language? Well, first of all, understand how someone uses their body in different situations mm. and positions. Mm. And that's something that you've been doing mm. all your life. Mm. You may not recognize or realize yeah. that you've been doing it. Now I would suggest you heighten mm. the skills that you've already created within yourself because yeah. doing so, as I said, will improve your life for sure. That's number mm. one. Number mm. two, again, recognize and realize the fact that you're always negotiating. Mm. And what you do today mm. impacts tomorrow's outcomes. Yeah. Number three, never ever place yourself mentally in a position where you think you are so small mm. that you can't offer value to someone. Yeah. Even if it's finding someone that you can align with to offer a greater perception of value of yourself, think about how you can do that. Don't mm. put yourself on a negative track Mm. and place yourself in a negative state of mind simply because you think you can't. Mm. If you think you can't, you won't even attempt to try to mm. do better. Mm. And on that note, Greg, and your three amazing tips or three lessons, understand how people use their body language in different uh, situations. Uh, second one, remember that you're always negotiating. And the third one, which is so, so, so powerful, never make yourself small. I think that is a very powerful statement. And this is not just, you know, uh, at work, but as human beings, we all need to stand tall and be equal to everyone else. That is a very powerful statement. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for speaking to me about your own journey as a master negotiator and a body language expert. Thank you for uh, talking to me about body language. Thank you for picking up the how I use the word fascinating five times. I tried not to use it the next after you pointed it out. Uh, thank you also for talking to me about such amazing things that you are able to pick up when you're looking at body language and when you are talking about negotiation. Well, you're thank more you for speaking to me and good luck. 
Well, thank you. And let me, may I just give away one more thing to yes, all of course. these viewers and listeners? If they want free information, they can go to my website, which is themasternegotiator.com. That's T-H-E-M-A-S-T-E-R-N-E-G-O-T-I-A-T-O-R.com. Or reach me at Greg, G-R-E-G, at themasternegotiator.com. Ashatosh, it's my pleasure in serving you and your listeners. Thank you for inviting me to do so. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.